Let's consider angular acceleration. As a reminder, angular displacement was related to arc length through the radius. Because displacement happens through time, and dividing the arc length by time gives the tangential velocity, and also dividing angular displacement by time gives angular velocity, we have the relation that tangential velocity is equal to the radius times the angular velocity. Taking it one step further, Tangential acceleration is the rate of change of tangential velocity with time. Angular acceleration is the rate of change of angular velocity with time. They are related through the radius in a similar way. In this video, we will only consider constant acceleration. For time-dependent acceleration, please refer to the topics of derivatives and integrals for the calculus treatment. For constant acceleration, here are the algebraically derived equations relating position, velocity, acceleration, and time. Because through radius, each of the linear quantities has a matching angular quantity, the resulting equations for angular quantities have exactly the same form. You merely need to substitute in the equivalent angular quantity for each linear quantity. Angular position for position, angular velocity for velocity, and angular acceleration for acceleration. Here is a simple example. We want to find the angular acceleration of a motor spinning up. Start by reading the problem and take note of every kinematic quantity. 
make sure to note what is being asked for. With so many quantities, it is an important check that all of them are in standard form. In this example, RPM, which stands for rotations per minute, had to be converted to radians per second. Look back at the kinematic equations to choose the one that involves your unknown in terms of known quantities. Solve algebraically for the unknown and plug in with units. Don't forget to reread the problem at the end to make sure you have answered the question. In problems that relate linear motion to angular motion, you will have to check whether the no slip condition applies. In that case, remember that the two regimes are related through the radius. In this example, we have to find how rapidly we can lift an object with a pulley worked by a calibrated motor. We read the problem for kinematic quantities and take note of what is being asked for. With so many quantities, it is recommended to draw a picture to keep track of them all. Again, take note of any quantities you need to convert to standard units. When there is a mix of linear and angular quantities, you need to choose which regime you want to work in. In this case, we have chosen to work in the angular regime, hence we use the no-slip condition to convert linear quantities into their angular equivalence. Again, we choose from our available equations the one that solves for the unknown. We solve for the unknown 
symbolically plug in and check that the units correctly cancel. We finish by rereading the problem and making sure that all quantities have been considered and we have answered the question.